Hi there! Today I would like to share a quick lecture about the ideas of necessary and sufficient and how they relate to psychopathology and clinical science. I get a lot of questions about these terms from students, so I thought a really quick video to clear them up might be helpful. I'm also actually going to introduce a third term, and that is contributory. That one tends to be easier, so I didn't take up space on the board for it, but we'll talk about how all three of these terms are relevant for both diagnostics and for understanding the causes of mental health problems, so the etiology. Okay, so first, contributory causes are anything that generally increase the likelihood of a mental health problem occurring, and so these tend to be broader. So things like poverty, for instance, are going to broadly increase the risk of mental health problems across the board for many different kinds of things. Um, child abuse increases the likelihood of many different kinds of mental health problems. It's just another example. Uh, to think of another, living through a global pandemic <laughs> might increase the risk of mental health problems for many people and for many specific kinds of problems. For instance, you might imagine that Living through a pandemic might increase the likelihood of specific phobias, particularly those that are health-oriented, illness anxiety disorder, or perhaps obsessive compulsive disorder where the obsessions deal with cleanliness and germs. You might even find that people have a hard time doing everyday things like going to get a haircut. Just a hypothetical example. So, contributory causes increase the likelihood in general, and that's how we would think of them as an etiological factor. In a diagnostic factor, a contributory factor would just be something that is part of the diagnostic package, but is not necessary or sufficient. So if we think of major depressive disorder, for instance, there are a number of different symptoms that can be part of the diagnostic checklist, but are not required or are not special. So things such as suicidality or lethargy, these are not um, special, they're just a part of the set of options that make up the checklist where clients have to have at least five out of the nine things on that list in order to meet criteria for the diagnosis. So those would be contributory diagnostic factors. Okay, so let's talk about these two ideas, necessary and sufficient. First off, necessary, and again, we're really just using it in its typical dictionary sort of format, Necessary means that something is needed. So if you're like me and you like mnemonics and that helps you learn things, they both start with N and that maybe helps you remember it. Right? So a necessary factor is something that is needed. You could also think of it as a must have or that it is a logical step by step sort of sequence. Um, if the end result occurred, then it is necessary that this factor was in place beforehand. Okay, so when we think about it in terms of etiology, a necessary causal factor, again, is something that must be there in order for the outcome of interest to happen. So, to use an example from medicine, someone must experience HIV before it's possible for them to experience AIDS. Right? You have to have HIV before you can have AIDS. It's a necessary step in that sequence. To refer to mental health examples, a trauma must occur in someone's life in order for them to experience PTSD. That one's pretty logical, right? You can't have post-traumatic stress disorder unless you first experienced a trauma. Similarly, the same thing applies to acute stress disorder. It, it requires that a trauma took place. And then another similar example would be adjustment disorder. There must have been some change in circumstances or some event which was difficult for the individual and they're having a hard time grappling with it. Right? That is necessary, that is needed, it is a must-have cause in order for that outcome to occur. Right? So, etiologically speaking, a necessary cause is something that must happen in order for the resulting disorder of interest to take place. Necessary diagnostic factors, on the other hand, are parts of a client's clinical profile which must be in place in order for a diagnosis to be appropriate. So, to refer to depression again, major depressive disorder, Again, there's a list of potential symptoms that someone could experience that we can call depression, but the DSM specifies that there are two where at least one of those two must be in place, otherwise the diagnosis is inappropriate. Specifically, those are depressed mood or anhedonia. A client must be experiencing one of those two things plus an adequate array of other depressed symptoms in order for someone to appropriately make that diagnosis. Another example, which is pretty simple, in obsessive-compulsive disorder, 
the person must be experiencing obsessions and or compulsions. Otherwise, it's not an appropriate diagnosis. Other diagnoses don't necessarily have this. They don't have necessary diagnostic factors. Things such as generalized anxiety disorder, for instance. It is defined as a set of anxiety-related symptoms, but there's no rule that says this one must be there or one of these three must be there. It's just an overall list. And if a client experiences enough of them to a clinically significant degree, you can make the diagnosis. Okay, so a necessary diagnostic factor is something that must be present in order to make the diagnosis. Check. Okay, let's head over here to sufficient. And again, I like mnemonics. I like the idea that they both start with S. Maybe that'll help you remember it. You can think of sufficient factors as things that are satisfactory by themselves or solo, they can have the effect of interest. So a sufficient factor is enough on its own. Enough might be another good word to think of. So in terms of etiology, in terms of the cause of problems, decapitation is a great example, right? Maybe this seems silly, but decapitation to have one's head cut off is a sufficient cause for death. So if death is the outcome of interest, having your head cut off is a sufficient way to reach that outcome. It's not the only way that people die, but it sufficiently does kill someone, okay? In the psychological literature, there is an argument about the idea of hopelessness in that if someone experiences hopelessness in the way that the researchers have defined it, that that is a sufficient factor to lead to a depressive episode. You'd have to read through some of the literature and get the details about how they've defined hopelessness and exactly why there is a causal chain that leads to depression, but it's a compelling argument and it's been around in the literature for a few decades. So, just as another example, right? We could say that hopelessness sufficiently causes depression. It can do it on its own. Okay, so that's etiology, that's thinking of causes for disorders. And then lastly, in terms of sufficient diagnostic factors, again, this would refer to the idea that something by itself is enough to make an appropriate diagnosis. So, um, let's play with medicine again. If you walk into a room and you see a patient who has a bone visibly sticking out of their arm, you can sufficiently make the diagnosis of a compound fracture, right? That's enough info right there. You can see that the bone is sticking out, okay? Many times in mental health, things are not quite so simple. But if somebody is experiencing a manic episode, that's basically sufficient cause for diagnosing bipolar type 1. Sufficient and necessary factors tend to be a bit less common in mental health than, say, comparing to medicine. But as I've shown here, there are a few noteworthy examples. And importantly, it's good for students to be thinking about how the terms relate. So you could have a factor which is necessary but not sufficient. Again, uh, trauma makes a great example, right? Not all people who experience trauma go on to develop PTSD. But in order to develop PTSD, you have to have had a trauma. It's necessary. And you can have causal factors that are sufficient, but not necessary, right? So de decapitation sufficiently kills you, but it's not the only way people die. It's not the necessary cause of death, okay? So in diagnosis, we're referring to something that by itself, solo, is enough to meet the diagnostic criteria. So I hope this helps. I hope this helps clarify necessary versus sufficient and that it'll make studying for diagnosis and etiology a bit easier. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.